All right, let's do this thing. Okay, while I'm getting this set up, let's uh, talk about some ground rules. I am opening the new 2018 Mac Mini for the very first time. Um, not entirely sure what to expect when it comes to upgrading RAM. Don't know even if it's possible. Apple seemed to imply it was possible for service departments, and I kind of consider myself capable enough to be sort of servicey, but I really don't know. So, but the point about the ground rules is this. I make no warranty at all that if you do what I do, you won't break your computer. So keep in mind, you might be voiding your warranty. You might be knocking the earth out of orbit. No warranty or guarantee whatsoever. Basically, you're completely on your own if you do what I'm doing. You just, just be aware of that. So, okay. I've got the box open. I've got the cable. What I'm going to do first is uh, boot this thing and make sure it boots. So I know you've seen ports. Uh, it's pretty. There's a label tape on the back. I know you've seen ports and other information uh, on other sites. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the what is a Mac Mini and how does it work. Instead, I'm going to just go through the process of trying to make sure that it boots before I open it up. And then, more importantly, boots after I open it up. If you see me looking at my watch, it's because it's helping me look at the viewfinder that you're seeing to make sure I'm not completely off frame. So one of the things I like to do when I test a new machine is I like to use wired gear. Um, that removes any question of whether I've got Bluetooth set up right or I've got Wi-Fi set up right or anything like that. And I'm very glad to see that the Mac Mini comes with two USB connectors so I can go with very simple wired gear. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use wired gear for the bulk of my usage, but I have an Apple keyboard, which you might not have been able to see in frame. I have an Apple keyboard and then a completely random mouse. And these should at least get started. Plugging in an HDMI connection to this. Going to a random TV. I went through all the normal setup that a new computer has, uh, logged in, I didn't do any updates, but what I wanted to do was make sure that it registered, it booted, and I had a working machine before I took it apart. And as you can see, this machine shipped to me with eight gigabytes of RAM. So we are going to hope that when this whole process is done, you'll see 32 gigabytes of RAM and of course that it will boot. Okay. well. I'm about to start surgery. Um, like I said, I don't know what to expect, and I also don't know whether this is going to avoid warranties, your warranty, cause the thing to break, any of those sorts of things. So if you do this, you're on your own, you're doing it at your own risk, as I am. Okay, so the one thing I do know about this, uh, courtesy of Macworld doing a quick overview, is that the bottom of this unit doesn't open the way the bottom of the units used to open. Um, it used to twist and now it kind of pries. So I'm going to use one of these prying tools and that seems pretty straightforward. Pry it open. Okay. So we have ourselves a bunch of little screws. So let's take a look at what we've got. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that, I'm holding my case upside down. I'm using the iFixit stuff. And that screw looks to be a TR6. So I'm also gonna use one of these magnetic screw holders which I'm gonna stick over to the side to put these things back in. So when I put it back together, I'm going to put it back together. All right. Taking that out. There are also three kind of lower screws, which also respond, which I almost didn't see initially. They are super tiny. They're going to be kind of a challenge to get back in. Okay. 
that allows that to come up. And we have a very, very short cable. Yeah, it looks like it's attached to here. So that's up. Huh. That's the memory. Yeah. Right there is a little screw. There's an equal one on the other side. And that looks like what's keeping. And there's another one. So I am going to attempt to get that bad boy out first. Let's see if those will get them out. Yep. Okay, that one's a black screw. Now let's do the two on the side. Okay, that seems loose. Let's see. Oh, and there's another screw here. Okay. Uh, here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So one thing that comes to mind about this is this is not what the picture that Apple promoted looks like. All right, and the fan has a cable. It's going to one of these little teeny connectors down here and a second little connector. I'm going to show you those. See if this will zoom in far enough that you can see them. Let's see. There. And the other one is right at the base here. So those are the two fan connectors. Let's try this. It looks like it'll fit better. Yeah, there's one. Okay, that other connector is not the fan connector. So here's where memory is. It is, let's back the camera off a bit. It's here, and it's clearly under this casing. So in previous Macs, we had to slide, in previous Mac minis, we had to slide the casing off. So I'm gonna move the tools out of the way for a second. I'm gonna stare at this. There's two big screws here and here, which kind of look like they're holding the whole thing in. And since this is a unibody shell, if you look at this side, this is all one. One thing, it's not going to slide out this way. But back here where all the ports are, you can kind of see, there you go, you can kind of see where the plastic, where the aluminum ends and the plastic begins. So that looks to be just right. Okay, that is a TR-10. All right, so let's, okay, that's one. There we go, okay. So let's show you, as you can see, it's starting to come out. Let's see if it comes all the way out conveniently or whether I'm gonna regret this. I may regret this, it's not coming out conveniently. Okay, there's something in its way. Okay, well that, can oh, there's a connect, these connectors, all right. Remember that little connector I showed you earlier? This one? That's attached to the back wall here. And it looks like this big connector is also attached. This makes me a bit nervous, folks. There we go. Okay, that connector is now loose. All right, let's try this again. Let's see if I can push this out. Yeah, okay, here comes the motherboard. Stuff out of the way. Here comes the motherboard. Okay. All right, so first, let's, I'm gonna set the motherboard aside for just a second. The larger cable that goes on the motherboard, this is the smaller, and these are the two screw holes where the, uh, um, where the motherboard is secured to the bottom of the unit.
Okay, let's see what this does. There's a lift. Slides up. Okay, so it's sliding upward like that. So that's it from the front. That's it from the back. And you can see, there you go. You can see that it basically is a little box. Now wow, the memory looks like memory, except for these sort of rubber gussets on the side, which <laughs> seem to be what's holding. Ooh, careful. They're on the side, but they're sort of holding these very delicate little memory things in. So getting it out, gotta be careful. I would do it from the bottom, it looks like. There we go. Okay, so one, two, there's one memory. And I think you should set these things aside because probably if you have to submit this stuff for a warranty repair, um, Apple's probably going to want their original stuff back. So let's, let's show you what we got. So I have this stuff, which is DDR4, and here's the specs. Pick that stuff off of Amazon, and you can see that. Let's grab one of these, and it looks like it goes that way. Usually the way you set one of these is you kind of get it in the angle in the right direction like that. And you try to push it back. Make sure I'm in there right. Right. Yep. And that looks like it's in. All right. See this little teeny tip here? You want that to go in the little teeny memory hole. So when you set this thing in, you're doing it. Pretty much feeling your way in. There you go. And then pushing it back enough to be really worried that this is a bad idea and it's in. Okay. So in theory, I have 32 gig of RAM installed in the machine. Now we have these weird leather thing, uh, not leather, rubber things. You can see that this side has these little taggy things and the other side doesn't. Those taggy things kind of correspond to these things here. So, I think this one goes on this side because it's lower and it looks like, it looks like it slides in. Okay, this I can't really show you, but there is a slide right in here. You know, I'll do it on the on this side where you might be able to tell. Okay, so you see this piece here? All right, and then take the same rubbery thing. Again, this is fiddly stuff. Well, that's what it's going to be. Get the other piece back in there. All right, like so. All right. Let's try to put this whole thing back together. So next is the memory cover. Okay, which goes there. And the memory does fit. So now the challenge is to put these super tiny screws back. Which is tough because I've also got a Band-Aid. And I'm not over tightening, I'm just tightening till it feels firm. All right. Okay, so we have memory in the unit. So I think now, if I remember my steps correctly, I think what we're gonna do is put the unit back in and reattach those two connectors. So I'm gonna put away the T5 bit because that was all I think I needed it for. All right. Here we go. This is a little bit nerve-wracking, I will admit. Okay, slide it back in. Gently. Gently, 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 gently lift. This is 
zoom in. Okay, I'm looking. You're looking at the wrong side. There we go. Okay. So I want to lift this cable up as I slide it in. There we go. I want to lift that up as I slide it in. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is reseat. And this is where my mic died. But what I'm doing here is I'm pushing gently, really, really gently, the motherboard inside the uniframe body. Next, it's time to reconnect that super tiny connector, which is a royal pain. This larger connector isn't too bad as long as you're careful. Then it's time for the two big screws. First, uh, get the first and the second one in. This is the fan connector, and you don't want to bend this around. What you want to do is flip the fan over so it goes into that slot like that. So place the fan gently down into place. Don't screw these two screws on the side in first. I'll show you why. What you want to do is you want to grab and put screws into these two screw holes before you put it into the unit because it's really hard to reach in there. So you just set the screws in and then once the screws are set in, and I'm doing one here, you set the screw in and you can see you have full control over it and then what you do is you pick up the fan and you place it back into the unit. There we go, like that. And then go ahead and screw in all four of those screws. It should be a pretty straightforward process. Once you've got the thing in place, you just take the screws and do it. And otherwise, you're, you're really trying to get almost under the unibody frame to get those front two screws in. Here, you're just gently putting the screws in. Now this is the radio connector, and as you can see, you've got both a connector and a screw that holds that down, and it's a very short wire. So you're going to want to be really careful how you put these things into the system. Um, lift it up, and, and there, as you can see, the top left is where the connector goes, and they're screwed in like that. And you just press it in, but it's, it's, it's very fiddly, so be really careful. And finally, it's time to put the screws in. These screws are relatively easy. You just screw them on in. But just in case you think you have smooth sailing, look at the size of these little screws. You've got three of these that you have to put in around the edge, and they're just insanely tiny. So just be really gentle, keep track of them, and put them in. The black disc is pretty easy. All you do is align the hole there with the screws. There's three of those. Those are the larger screws, and you align it, and just set it down, and press, press, and we're done. Well, feast your eyes on all 32 gigabytes of RAM in my computer. Now, I kind of uh, regret that I didn't buy 64 gigabytes right up front because doing this upgrade was a pain. It's not impossible, but it was a pain. But I also appreciated saving the money I saved not doing so. Um, the conclusion I would say is that this is definitely not an upgrade for the faint of heart. Even if you know what you're doing, there's a lot of little fiddly parts that you have to go and, and figure out. All that being said, it is doable and it does work, and there you go. So for ZDNet, my name is David Gewertz, and I'll be seeing you using my new Mac Mini. Have a great day.